Good morning you guys and welcome to today's vlog. Before the vlog starts, make sure to subscribe to my channel by clicking the red subscribe button down below. Now let's go on to the video. I am here in LA for the Rolex Experience, which is a conference for women and girls with disabilities. I just finished listening to a panel about being an entrepreneur with a disability and I also just finished a dance class taught by Connor Lendius which is one of the Rolex. So I will put all of that footage in here. Hi. Well, hi everyone. So I'm Kelly Brush. I um, am from Vermont, and that's where I live now. Um, I was an athlete my whole life. I love to be active and do sports. That was my favorite thing to do, and how I felt like I really saw myself. Um, when I was in college, I was a sophomore, and I was ski racing, and I fell and I hit a lift tower, and I broke my back, and I had a spinal cord injury, um, and I felt like my whole life was changed and like my what I loved to do was taken away from me. But when I learned I could be active and I actually experienced that activity for the first time when I was in rehab and got on a hit cycle, it was like my whole my eyes opened up and, and I was able to understand what I actually could do and I felt like myself again and I felt like I could be the person I wanted to be and live the life that I always wanted to live. But at the same time, I saw how many barriers there were to getting into adaptive sports. So I wanted to change that. I wanted to allow everybody who has a spinal cord injury or any kind of disability to be able to get into adaptive sports. So I started the Kelly Brush Foundation to do that, to allow access to adaptive sports. And that's what we've been doing since 2006. So 18 years ago, we started. We started really small and we've grown a lot. We're now. We're now um, giving grants and providing programs all across the United States. In all 50 states, we've given grants for adaptive sports equipment. Um, we're giving away almost a million dollars a year wow. just in grants. Woo. Wow. Wow. And we have all sorts of other programs that are, that are designed to open up the world of adaptive sports to people with disabilities because I know how impactful that can be uh, for me, how impactful it was for me, and how impactful it can be for everybody else. So that's the work that I'm doing all the time now. Amazing. So cool. Thank you for sharing. Natalia? Um, hello everybody. My name is Natalia Moyara. Um, I'm originally from Brazil and I moved to the U.S. in 2019. Originally in Orlando, Florida and then now I've been living here in Santa Monica for the past three years or so. Um, my story starts all the way back in Brazil when I was two years old. I got an accident where I was ran over by a bus. Um, it was pretty tough, especially because of my age. I had 2% chance of survival, um, had to fight for my life for a really long time. My family is not very, like they don't have much money, I grew up pretty poor, I would say. And they had to sell everything they had to basically afford my treatment growing up. And because of that, I ended up moving to a different state to get surgeries my whole life. I had surgeries every year from two all the way to when I was 16, 17 years old. And that was actually something that changed my life because when I moved to this different state, I got introduced to adaptive sports. And when I was 12 years old, I got introduced to adaptive tennis. Um, I fell in love with it. And I feel like that moment pivoted my entire life because I felt like something, I found something that was good and something that I could do well and something that I could perform to my highest level. And I mean, a couple of years later, I became the first Paralympic athlete to represent my country in the Paralympic Games. and then had the honor to play in Brazil home games in 2016 um, and then won two gold medals in the Pan American Games which was also the first medals for my country and I feel like I took on that role of changing the scenario of the sports for women and also young women, young female athletes in Brazil 
And I feel like nowadays I just try to give back. I'm officially retired. I just try to give back through my social media, through the work I do, trying to grow the programs in Brazil. Um, I'm also working with LA28 now, so I can also give back through the next Paralympics to be a voice from the within. Um, and I feel like that's, that, that's my passion now. That's what I like to do, is just try to push what changed my life to other people too. Amazing. Thank you so much. Tiffany. Hi everyone, good morning. Um, I'm going to start with a brief visual description. Uh, so I'm a Taiwanese American woman with a little bit shoulder length black hair. And I'm wearing a bright pink blazer and a white dress. And what, what, what don't I do? Um, <laughs> so I got to the space when I was nine years old. I was involved in a car accident. My dad was driving. He unfortunately passed away. Uh, and I permanently paralyzed one of my arms, broke a couple bones in one of my legs, so I was a temporary wheelchair user for four months, and much later diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, which is a mental health disability. And essentially, I think what I do is I tell people that I'm building and funding the things I wish existed when I was younger. Um, so the thing that I spend most of my time doing is a nonprofit organization called Diversibility. It's kind of like the Rolettes. I wish the Rolettes had been around when I was nine to be able to find community. Um, in this case, it's a cross-disability community. Uh, but I actually started my career in investment banking at Goldman Sachs. And while I was there, I kind of got introduced to some of the communities and affinity groups that they were building internally. And I saw how much value we could have building those communities outside of a corporate environment as well. Uh, I have a book coming out in three months that Ali has read. And, uh, and also, I guess, do a lot of advocacy, not only uh, also with LA28, we're doing some work with them on advising them on at, um, workforce development, uh, but turning to social media and thinking about how can we bring more money and invest more money back within the disability community as well. Thank you so much. So great. Hi everybody, I'm Andrea Hilton. Um, for visual description, I'm a black woman. I have a bra of a place that um, a little bit of a long and brown dress with some trouble with other trends. Um, so I was born with my disability, uh, spinal muscular atrophy, this is one of muscular dystrophy. Uh, I was diagnosed around 18 months. Um, so disability is in my life doesn't mean that I embraced disability for my entire life. Because I didn't see anyone that looked like me in the media. Um, and so, you know, I grew up as a girl who was really trying to hide or even overcompensate for what I felt was a deficit, right? I felt like, you know, disability was a bad thing. And so I did everything I could to kind of get people to not see my disability. And as I grew older, um, mid-20s, I moved up to the D.C. area um, to work in nonprofit, and I started to, you know, experience barriers that were fresher, especially in the nation's capital. I had this expectation of things being perfect, and, you know, I'd be able to get my caregiver and insurance and all of these things, and I had a moment of, you know, frustration where I felt like I was an educated person, it's one that has done all the things they tell you to do, um, to live the American dream, and I was still having all these struggles that somebody needed to address it. And I feel like a lot of us, we have this moment of, if not me, then who? <laughs> right. And so um, I was working in my pocket at the time and decided to, to kind of dive in to address, uh, like I think we've all kind of shared the, the, the things that I did not see, which was how can I ensure or support um, disabled people being not just accepted, but that our needs to be met and even more that we can be seen and valued as citizens, as folks that deserve to live vibrant, robust lives. And so um, I started out working um, first for a think tank that worked on workforce development for disabled people. And I worked for Girl Scouts for um, over seven years leading disability inclusion. And at that point, I felt like there were still some gaps and as I was running into organizations, nonprofits, foundations, corporations, I found these consistent things where people weren't 
Um, it wasn't because they didn't want to address this, they were, they, they were, they were afraid of, you know, um, talking about it or reaching out to, or connecting with the disabled people. And my, back, my educational background is in public relations. And so I felt like there was an opportunity to bridge that gap. And so I decided to start a consulting firm, um, Lamar Consulting, that is a disability-focused strategy and communication firm. So we work on campaigns, product development, event accessibility, things like that to bridge that gap. One of our claims to fame is that we um, led the impact campaign for the Oscar nominated film, Big Camp.
got to test out a bunch of new equipment for my wheelchair and some new fun gadgets that I can use to make myself a lot more independent. And I had a lot of fun parties. So I'll put all that footage in here. From the beginning, yes, let me face this thing slow. Six, seven, here we go. And if you got the best of me, think you have the right left, think you have and right left. New part, good, contract, is push away, come. Yes. And this is jazz hand. A little faster. Five, six, seven, here we go. And one feet got the best of me. Be it out the last lap. Be it better than everything. Good is gone. There we go. One more time. Five, six, seven, here we go. And one feet you got the best of me. Be it out the last lap. But you think that everything good is gone. Right 
and I'm a white female, probably your grandmother's age, you don't hold that against me. I am wearing a big black shirt and black pants, and the back of my shirt, I'll let those who can read, read it. That's my specialty. I've been in the adult industry for 30 years, and I work a lot with many communities, including the disabled community.
clear about it, communicate, and this actually happened a couple of weeks ago. Um, not a date, but like just someone new I met, and um, they did the same thing, like I wouldn't have noticed, and I simply just said, you know, this is part of who I am, and then I'm, I'm, I'm embracing it, and this is part of my journey, so. Um, I've been with the Rolettes in some capacity since 2016. Um, so I'm so just grateful to be able to still be here with the team and the girls today and just be growing and expanding and, and learning and living together. And um, yeah, just thank you all so much. Hi, I'm Izzy. Um, I'm So exciting. Um, I've been coming since like, this is my sixth romance experience now, so this has been like a dream for to be on the team now and to be here hanging out with everybody and this is like my favorite time of the year, so I'm so excited. <laughs>
new girls and all of the girls who are here who come before continue to come because you all just light up my little heart so much. But, um, hi everyone, my name is Maya. Joined the team as a little sis in 2021, going three years strong, um, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. I just love being a part of this team and having these girls as my community. I'm new to LA, and these are the friends that I have, and I really just love them. They're my family. Hi guys, I'm Sam. I have been with Rolette since 2014. It's experience is seeing you guys find what I found at my first school experience and I think this is a testimony that the friendships that you guys make here are going to last a lifetime and I'm just so happy that you guys are here. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys for coming every single year to everyone who comes and returns to Rose experience and welcome. I hope that all the new attendees have, have, have had found a home here. I love you guys. Been meeting everyone in you know, real life, so going from Instagram to real life, that hits a little different. So thank you guys for being here, and it's been so awesome to connect. Hi everyone.